I'm reading more Legan and I'm going to read an excerpt uh, to you and this is from Warlegan book one it's sort of the middle of chapter three and uh, it's between Ross and Elizabeth Ross and Demelza have gone over to the Trevonances they've been invited over and a social gathering and um, Elizabeth and Francis have gone with them uh, is there anything else? There's um, Caroline Penvenon is there because she is betrothed to Unwin Trevornance, but they are not engaged. And Unwin Trevornance is Sir John's brother. Hmm. Ennis had so probed into the drawer that the wound had never healed. His old friend, Dr. Choke, would bear him out ignorance and neglect but Sir John found the move a mistaken one because not only did Caroline speak quickly in Dr Ennis's defence but she found an ally in Rospold Dark and the baronet to his annoyance and still more to Unwin's found himself between two fires. Ross had thought Caroline pert on their first introduction but now for the moment they were in accord and it was noticeable at the end of the argument that Caroline's eyes travelled over him approvingly. Elizabeth said in an undertone to Ross, she's lovely isn't she? Very striking. Beauty's a matter of taste. Is it true do you think that what the eye doesn't admire the heart doesn't desire? Oh without doubt. Do you know anything to disprove it? Well it has been so with me as you should know. I know very little of you Ross. How often have we met in five years? A dozen times? Ross was silent. I was not thinking of the last five years, but perhaps you're right. I am inclined to agree. I know very little of you either, and you've changed so much, inwardly I mean. Have I? Tell me in what way the deterioration is most noticeable. That's asking a reassurance, isn't it? You may have it. It's a different Elizabeth, that's all. The opposite of deterioration, but startling at times. I understand now how young you were when you promised to marry me. Elizabeth put her hand out to her wine glass, but only fingered the stem. I should have been old enough to know my own mind. Something in the way she spoke surprised him. The sudden feeling in her voice was like self-contempt. It swung their talk right away from the polite, slightly flirtatious conversation that had been passing between them. He looked at her, trying to weigh this up, said cautiously to provide her with the normal escape, Well, let us agree you were young, and then you thought I was dead. Elizabeth glanced down the table to where Francis was talking to Ruth Treneglos. The emotion had perhaps caught her unawares too, or perhaps she decided she had escaped too often. In a perfectly cool young voice she said, I never really believed you were dead. I thought I loved Francis better. You thought you loved him? She nodded her head, and then I discovered my mistake. When? quite soon. His rational mind still refused to accept this sudden conversation at its full value, but somewhere inside him his heart was beating, as if the intelligence reached him through another channel. Twenty-odd people at this table, his own wife talking to the cavalry officer with the big moustache, Sir Hugh at her other hand waiting to break in, George Warlegan for the most part silent and intent but his gaze every now and then flickering up from his food or from his partners to rest upon Elizabeth's hair or mouth or hands. Incredible that Elizabeth should choose this moment to make such a confession after nine years. Incredible that it should be true. These damned mongrels that roam about, said Lady Bedruggan feelingly, breeding and interbreeding. They make it uncommon hard to keep one's stock pure. You're that much luckier, John, dealing only in cattle. What did you say your dog was, miss? A pug, 
said Caroline, with beautiful black curly hair and gold brown face, no bigger than the centre of this plate. Unwood regards him with the utmost respect and affection, don't you, dear? Respect, yes, said Unwin, for the teeth are devilish sharp. Ross said to Elizabeth, this is some pleasant joke you are trying on me. Elizabeth, Elizabeth smiled with a sudden brilliant, brittle brilliance. Oh, it's a joke indeed, but it is against myself, Ross. Didn't you know? I wonder you never guessed. Guessed? Well, if you did not guess, it might have been more gallant of you to have met this barefaced confession halfway. Is it such an astonishment that a woman who changed her mind once could change it twice. Well, yes, perhaps it is, for it has always been an astonishment and a humiliation to me. After what seemed a long time, Ross said, That first Easter I came to you after you married, you told me then plain enough that you loved only Francis and that no thought and I had no thoughts of anyone else. Was that when I should have told you? only a few months after my marriage and with Geoffrey Charles already alive in me something was taken away from Ross and another dish put in its place whatever the object of the party Sir John was not sparing his cellar and talk at the table was louder than it had been yet Ross had to struggle with himself not to push his chair back and get away that Elizabeth should have chosen this moment unless it was that only the presence of other people had given her the courage to tell him point blank what she had long wanted him to know. And where a few minutes ago he had made no sense of what she said, now he saw it as sensible enough. Every second that passed fitted in more inescapably into the pattern of the last nine years. And Francis, he said, does he know? I've said... Oh, I've already said too much, Ross. My tongue, a sudden impulse. It had best been forgotten, or if not forgotten, disregarded. What were we talking of before this? Three places down the table, Francis, slightly raffish face, in which the vivid lines of youth were losing themselves in too early a deterioration. As if conscious just then of something toward, he glanced up at Ross, wrinkled one eyebrow brow, and winked. Francis had known, Ross saw that now, Francis had known so long that his early outbreaks of disillusion and disappointment were far behind him, his own jealousy long spent, and perhaps his love with it. He felt no discomfort at seeing Ross and Elizabeth together. His quarrels in earlier years, the enigmas of his behaviour, were all explained. And now so far as he was concerned, it was all past. Part of an era best forgotten in this new time of tolerance and goodwill. Perhaps, Ross thought, that was why Elizabeth was now ven had now ventured to tell him. Because her feeling was spent and she believed Ross's to be. She'd offered it as an explanation, an apology of things past, something due to him now that danger no longer existed for any of them in the confession. Elizabeth had turned to answer some question put by the man on the other side of her, and it was a moment or two before Ross was able to see her face again. Even then she didn't meet his eyes, but he knew instantly by something in her expression if he had not in fact known all along that for her the question was not in the very least a dead one and she did not suppose it to be so for him. After the ladies had left there was half an hour with the port and then the sexes were reshuffled for tea and coffee. So there we are right at the beginning of all Egan you can see that Elizabeth has had an effect upon Ross and I think she's upset him actually I think he's upset after the confession it's certainly shaken him he ha didn't have an inkling the thought didn't cross his mind that she could still be interested in him and still that she loved him always I 
like lots of these stories, don't you? If you stuck it this far, you probably do. Good evening. <laughs>